Hello everyone and welcome back to NeuroPsyQ, where today we will be delving into a very exciting brand new topic on the channel. Do you have any friends that swear by white noise playlists to help them study or work? Or do you know anyone who plays white noise to help themselves fall asleep at night? Or have you ever felt a calm feeling wash over you while listening to the sounds of waves crashing onto a beach? These are only a few examples of the many ways we experience white noise in our daily lives, but are there actually any benefits to daily white noise exposure? This all new NeuroPsyQ episode will answer this important question and many others in order to explain how you can use white noise to improve your focus, sleep, and overall mental wellness. So get comfortable, relax, and enjoy the video as we dive into the fascinating neuroscience behind white noise. Before we can unpack the potential benefits of white noise, a little background is necessary to first understand what white noise actually is and how it is different from other types of noise. White noise is a very specific type of noise comprised of all frequencies of sound across the spectrum of audible sound, playing together in equal intensity, which is why it is also classified as what is known as broadband noise. White noise can be thought of most commonly as the static sound played by an untuned television or radio. In case you're wondering, yes, there are other colors of noise. Brown and pink noise are also broadband sounds, but they are both heard as lower frequencies by the human ear, since their power decreases with each ascending octave. Green noise, on the other hand, contains equal volumes of all sound frequencies, but amplifies frequencies in the middle of the sound spectrum. Now that we've covered what white noise is, it's time to address the reason why most of you probably clicked on this video, the benefits of white noise. Before I begin, however, it's important to note that none of the information provided in this video should be taken as medical advice, and you should always consult your physician before making any lifestyle changes. Furthermore, much of the limited research completed into the effects of white noise is still relatively new, and further studies are required to confirm the preliminary results of the studies that have been conducted to date. So with all that being said, let's begin by reviewing the evidence surrounding what is probably the most widely advertised benefit of white noise exposure, improved sleep. Sleep studies involving newborn babies have found that playing white noise helped them to fall asleep faster, while studies involving adult subjects have found that when played throughout the night, white noise affected the amount of time subjects spent in different sleep stages. A separate study found that adults fell asleep 38% faster when listening to white noise, which has been supported by the findings of recent studies that have continued to suggest white noise does promote sleep. In one such study, while listening to white noise, residents of a high noise area of New York City both fell asleep more quickly and remained asleep for a greater proportion of their time spent in bed. Another study found that critically ill patients staying in a noisy hospital unit experienced improved sleep quality when listening to white noise through headphones. However, the transformative benefits offered by white noise aren't just restricted, restricted to our sleep, since recent studies have also identified, identified ways in which white noise exposure improves both recall and reading skills. Studies that examine children with reading disorders and individuals with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, found that playing white noise while subjects perform tasks had a beneficial effect on the subject's performance. Similar studies that included children with reading disabilities also noted both memory recall and reading skills were enhanced when the children listened to white noise. And finally, adults participating in studies testing their recall ability were found to exhibit superior recall when listening to white noise. Now, before taking a deeper dive into some of the other many benefits white noise has to offer, a bit of a neuroscience lesson is necessary to understand just how white noise exposure achieves these benefits. An early fMRI, or functional magnetic resonance imaging study, discovered that white noise exposure caused an increase in blood oxygen level dependent, or bold response, in several different areas of the brain. Heschel's gyrus, the cuneus, the superior temporal gyrus, the precuneus, the posterior cingulate cortex, the middle temporal gyrus, the insula, the anterior cingulate cortex, the fusiform cortex, the middle temporal gyrus, the insula, the anterior cingulate cortex, the fusiform gyrus, and the temporal poles of the brain. Now, I know that's a lot of complicated sounding structures that I've just mentioned, and we certainly don't have time to review their individual functions. So let's briefly address what these brain regions all share in common. Well, for the most part, they are all involved in processing auditory and visual stimuli, as well as in the process of memory retrieval. It will come as no surprise, then, that exposure to acoustic white noise has been associated with a modulatory effect in a number of different cognitive tasks linked with memory and dopaminergic neurotransmission. In other words, mental processes triggered by the release of the potent neurotransmitter dopamine. In particular, white noise has been suggested to influence memory processes, including recall and recognition of learned items, 
short-term memory, and perceptual judgments in both the linguistic and visual domains. Following white noise exposure, researchers have also observed an excitability increase in the left middle temporal gyrus, an area of the brain responsible for lexico-semantic retrieval, or the recall and use of different words in order to produce coherent language. This physiological finding has been supported by behavioral studies, which have indeed found a link between white noise exposure and enhanced word learning among healthy adults. Furthermore, some researchers have, just, have suggested that there may even be a habituation or a sensitization component to the changes in excitability observed in the parts of the brain I've mentioned, following exposure to white noise. One study witnessed an increase in excitability of the temporal lobe, which is a brain region responsible for processing auditory input and encoding memory, along with a decrease in excitability of the frontal lobe, a brain region responsible for controlling our executive functions, voluntary movement, and expressive language, after four minutes of exposure to white noise. This temporal or time-dependent shift in excitability may be explained by the conscious processing of the stimulus transitioning toward a more primary auditory processing, which occurs in the temporal lobe and where greater excitatory effect is observed after a certain period of time. It's also been suggested that plasticity effects accumulate soon after exposure onset in the case of transcranial random noise stimulation, which is a separate theory by which a weak alternating current that oscillates at random frequencies is transmitted through the scalp via a pair of electrodes. Now, whether similar effects are observed following white noise exposure remains to be investigated, but considering that recent white noise studies have called for more specific research into the temporal mechanisms of white noise stimulation, there is hope that many of the scientific community's long-standing questions regarding the mysteries of white noise will soon be answered. However, one question in particular has garnered much attention recently. How exactly does white noise deliver its benefits? Now, like with many of the other questions surrounding white noise, there is no single correct answer just yet, and multiple principles are currently being suggested that hold promise as potential answers. One of these principles is known as stochastic resonance and refers to how a signal can be enhanced when a background noise with matching frequencies is added. As you might recall from just a few moments ago, white noise contains all audible frequencies of sound and should therefore amplify any other frequency it is added to by improving what is known as the signal to noise ratio, commonly called the SNR. Uh, a professor from the Western Norway University of Applied Sciences named Goran Söderlund defines this ratio as a person's ability to differentiate between surrounding noise and the target signal. Imagine as an example that you're struggling to watch a YouTube video like this one for a class while in a noisy environment. By playing white noise at the same time, according to the stochastic principle, you will be amplifying the frequencies of the original YouTube video and will therefore be able to better focus on what you're hearing. Much of Professor Sutherland's work has demonstrated the cognitive benefits of white noise for people with reading disabilities and children with ADHD, such as those included in the studies I mentioned earlier. Now, although he believes stochastic resonance plays a role in the effects of white noise among these individuals, the exact mechanism for this principle is still not entirely understood by Professor Sutherland or any others, and further research in this area is still required. Another related explanation for the benefits of white noise is that the ability to distinguish SNR may be moderated by tonic dopamine levels. However, it's important to acknowledge that this hypothesis is based on the premise that white noise can operate in isolation to increase dopamine levels. Yet, unfortunately, animal studies on its effects have suggested otherwise thus far. One study found that although white noise benefited children classified as subattentive before the study, it had no effect on the controls and even negatively affected the performance of children classified as super attentive. These findings seem to indicate that white noise may perhaps only benefit concentration meaningfully among individuals with conditions like ADHD, which can be viewed as a dopamine deficit condition in the sense that low levels of the reward neurotransmitter are associated with low motivation and other comorbidities. Now, I wanted to end things off by looking towards the future and exploring how the use of white noise may change in the years to come as researchers are able to uncover more of its mysteries. As I've now mentioned several times throughout this video, everything that we've been discussing today in terms of the purported benefits of white noise and the proposed mechanisms behind them is based on preliminary research findings. In other words, these are researchers' best guesses based on the limited amount of research that's been conducted on this topic to date. 
So due to this lack of high quality research on white noise and the multitude of different factors that shape our cognition, white noise treatments are still only potential therapies that must be subjected to rigorous scientific scrutiny before they can be recommended to patients as medical therapies. With this being said, the potential life-changing benefits of white noise are a reality by the many who rely on it on a daily basis to help them study, work, relax, and sleep. So if any of the benefits I've mentioned in this video sound appealing to you and you're interested in tapping into the power of white noise for yourself, go ahead and give it a shot. How can you access white noise for yourself, you ask? Well, NeuroPsyQ will be releasing a 10-hour white noise video on this very same channel at the same time the video you are currently watching is released. So simply go into our video library, click on the 10-hour white noise video, and enjoy. In case you're all interested in reviewing the uh, current research on white noise in greater detail as well, included on this slide and the following one is a list of all the sources used throughout this video and the specific studies I reference. For your convenience, links to all of these sources will also be included in the, in the description below. Well, I hope that you've learned something about white noise today, and if you are interested in trying out white noise after watching this video, I hope that you experience some of the benefits I've mentioned for yourself. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see similar ones in the future, please like this video and subscribe to our channel, and also be sure to hit the bell button to activate notifications so you never miss another video from us in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon in our next video.